Welcome everyone to GamerMeld. Today we have the first Intel certified Thunderbolt 3 AM4 board, 64 cores, and an unbelievable 5.5 gigahertz, a new Ryzen 4000 chip, and Apple going Ryzen? But first, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as MassDrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, and if you do it today, you'll get $20 off your first Drop made items. So head to the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, I'm excited to say that the first ever AM4 board with an Intel certified Thunderbolt 3 port is here. For those who may not be too sure why that's important, Thunderbolt 3 has really been one of the only things truly lacking in the AMD board department. Sure, you could find some Thunderbolt 3 boards, which I think were all ASRock, but they were never actually certified by Intel, so there wasn't any kind of guarantee that it would work right. Luckily, not long ago, we received news that Intel was opening their Thunderbolt tech to the USB implementers forum. They did this to raise adoption rates, and obviously it should help. In light of that, ASRock announced the first Thunderbolt 3 certified AM4 board. It's called the X570 Phantom Gaming ITX TB3. And yes, I know that USB 4 is right around the corner, but with Thunderbolt 4 coming, this gives us hope for that as well. Next up, for those who didn't know, AMD's Threadripper 3990X is out, and the reviews are in. And while unfortunately I wasn't able to get a review unit, the results are about what you'd expect. As of yet, only a few applications are able to fully utilize all of those cores, with the 32 core part actually doing just as well in most other programs. Thanks to all those threads, most couldn't even run it at all without getting Windows 10 Enterprise Edition. At the end of the day, you'll likely know if the difference in price is worth it for you and what you do. If you're interested, I'll have an affiliate link in the description, but really, that's not what I'm here to talk about. As enthusiasts, we love a good overclock, and especially world records. Well, it looks like one overclocker who goes by safe disk was actually able to get the 3990X to an all-core, that's all 64 cores, overclock of 5.573 gigahertz. And yes, it more or less goes without saying that he used liquid nitrogen to achieve this, but to say that's impressive would be an understatement. When it comes to breaking benchmark records, the 3990X crushed quite a few, starting with s who took the record for GPU PI for CPU, Cinebench R20, and Geekbench 3 multi-core. And he achieved all of these with over 5GHz overclocks. Lastly, the overclocker's safe disk was able to break the Cinebench R15 and W Prime records. Basically, while it won't benefit you in many areas, AMD's 64-core part is a serious monster. Next up for today, it looks like AMD isn't done with their Ryzen 4000 APUs. In a recent video by Notebook Italia, which unfortunately has been taken down as of this writing, but not before we got some pictures of their goof. In the video, they show off an upcoming Lenovo Yoga Slim 14, and on the specs list, you can see that it states a Ryzen 9 4900U. Unfortunately, it didn't go into any kind of details on the core count or anything like that, but given the 9 moniker usually does mean more cores, we could be looking at a 10 core part. Then again, slim books aren't really considered the pinnacle of notebooks, but here's the hoping. Either way, it seems AMD is really serious about jumping into the mobile market. Speaking of AMD's push into mobile, it seems pretty clear that it's paying off, as Apple may soon start using them. In my last video, I discussed a few Navi GPUs that were found in Apple's latest Mac OS beta. Well, in a separate tweet, he found quite a few references to Picasso, Renoir, Van Gogh, etc., which are all code names for AMD's APUs. See, for those who didn't know, while Apple has used AMD's GPUs for years, they've exclusively used Intel's CPUs for nearly two decades. But with Intel's continued stock issues and their 10 nanometer problems, Apple could be looking elsewhere. In comes AMD with their new 7 nanometer APUs, along with their smart shift features that supposedly only AMD can do because they make both the GPU and CPU. One issue with this problem is that Apple's OS is so well integrated for Intel, it could be a major roadblock. Then again, with Apple's focus on security and Intel's never-ending vulnerabilities, it could be worth it for Apple in the long run. Of course, Intel is working on their next-gen Tiger Lake, so the company is clearly doing all they can to hold on. So while that does it for today, what do you think about AMD's 64 core beast? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and make sure to check out the GamerMail Discord server to talk all things gaming hardware. And as always, have a great day.